Leutnant Heinz Schnabel and Oberleutnant Harry Wappler have been hiding in a log pile all day. When the sun sets, the pair make their way to the prisoner of war camp's wire fence and with some brute force prise the wire apart just enough to squeeze through. The men reach a nearby train line where they notice the trains are forced to slow down due to the steep terrain. Desperate to get as far away from the prison camp as possible, this provides the perfect opportunity to hop on a passing freight train. The two men have prepared exceptionally well for their escape. Over their Luftwaffe flying suits, they're wearing the uniforms of Dutch RAF pilots. They even have forged RAF identity cards, showing Heinz Schnabel as pilot officer George David and Harry Vapler as flight lieutenant Harry Graven. The men leave the train when it pulls into a yard just outside Carlisle, where they spend the afternoon in a cinema. After the film, they join in with a group of RAF men and follow them back to their base at RAF Kingstown. Their false papers pass the test and the two German pilots are waved through the security gates. But by now it was getting dark. The men hide behind an aircraft hangar and wait for the morning. Daybreak reveals the prize the men have come for. On the grass in front of the hangar sits a Miles Magister. It's no Spitfire, but it's an easy-to-fly two-seat trainer, making it perfect for the escaping Luftwaffe pilots. So far, the escape is going well. The Germans' confidence is high, and they approach the RAF ground crew and ask them to start up the aircraft so they can carry out a taxi test. The ground crew oblige. Starting the aircraft, they hand it over to the two pilots. But then they watch in amazement as the so-called Dutch pilots take off and disappear from sight. In true British style, the ground crew are more angry that the Dutch pilots have broken regulations by flying without parachutes than the fact that one of their aircraft has just been stolen. Schnabel and Wappler are aiming for German-occupied Holland. They head southeast, past Leeds and across the Wash before turning towards the North Sea. Unfortunately, the Magister's fuel tanks had only been half full when the men took off. By this point, the tanks are nearly empty, and the two pilots realise they won't make the 350-mile crossing, and with no survival kit or parachutes, the men reluctantly turn around. The two men land their Magister in a field in Norfolk. Here, they're met by Police Sergeant Cliff Fisk, but the Germans refuse to give up on their audacious escape attempt and once again reach for their fake identity cards. Vapler explains that they need fuel for their aircraft. Police Sergeant Fisk very helpfully takes the men to the nearby police station where they telephone the nearest RAF base. Unfortunately, there were no fuel trucks available and the men were picked up and taken to the RAF base at Horsham St Faith. But by now, word of the stolen Magister was working its way through the RAF. The two apparently Dutch pilots flying a Miles Magister stood out like a sore thumb and the men were promptly arrested. The RAF officers, though, were so impressed by the men's outrageously bold escape attempt they treated the men to a meal in the officers' mess before returning them to the prison camp. To stop the Germans escaping again, they were moved to a prison camp in Canada where they stayed for the rest of the war. <laughs>